Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos is a game released by Blizzard Entertainment in July 2002. In January 2020, they tried to capitalize on nostalgia and published a remake called Warcraft 3 Reforged. The original game had a user score over 90% positive, while the remaster got less than 10%. If the people with access to the original materials could not capitalize on the success and understand why the game was great to begin with, what chances do we have? No matter what game, show or book we try to dissect, the odds of grasping his genius are the same as a child trying to understand a Grandmaster move. You know the mechanics of chess, and you could move a piece in the same way by accident, but you cannot possibly understand the consequences of your action. Now, tell me if this sounds familiar. You wait for a hyped game, you wait for a sale, as we all do, don't kid yourself. You try it out and got the worst feeling possible. Boredom. But, but people can be wrong, at least so many of them at once. Word of mouth is an excellent indicator of quality. Amazing games are shared and even celebrated in their respective communities. You don't see that often the peak of human creativity in action. I tried Marvel Step and found it quite repetitive, but I understand why players prefer the fast-paced nature of the game over something more tedious like Hearthstone. I don't play a lot of fighting games, but I do get the competitive nature of Street Fighter, and I am sure that most people will find my favorite games like Command and Conquer or Warhammer Dawn of War to be dull pieces of crap. I do understand why. All beloved games are popular for a good reason, and it's usually somewhat obvious why, at least on the surface level. And yes, this is true even for games you completely dislike. And I don't mind disliking games, but I do mind not understanding them. And today we will do exactly that. We will try to find the formula and comprehend the phenomenon of World of Horror. Howdy friends, my name is Dumitru, the head of Cool Kids Club, and welcome to... Regarding my misunderstanding. I found a Steam review that encapsulates most of my initial critique. And what surprised me was the fact that the review was quite well appreciated. Many encountered the same issues. Unbalanced gameplay, a lack of meaningful progression, and the sudden disappearance of the author after he promised an update. Nothing groundbreaking, but possible to fix in a reasonable time. But I felt the problem was rooted in something deeper, and the review mentioned something that later became the bulk of my conclusions. Negative reviews are a pain in the ass for developers, but as a player it gave me a sense of camaraderie. A sense that I'm not the insane one for not being immersed into the game. Most positive reviews for World of Horror say they like the mood and the art style, but that's just the first layer. It's like saying you liked Portal only because Gladys is making fun of you while designers and programmers spend thousands of collective hours making the puzzles and controls fun. Do you know that portals auto-track you closer to the middle? Or that jumping from certain walls gives you artificial momentum to complete the jump? Nobody ever would notice it in a regular playthrough, but these are the tricks that separate a normal game from a masterpiece. These designers saved you from yourself, and it just flew over your head. In this case, not noticing is a good thing. A magic trick works only if you believe in it. And I don't mind being deceived, but I do mind when people upload over a finger trick. See? I'm a magician too. But the real magic are the developers you met all along. Let me introduce you to Pavel Kosminski, the author of World of Horror, a man of culture who originated from Poland. He mentioned many times that he worked on this project as a part-time hobby for about six years. He was mostly inspired by the works of H.P. Lovecraft, the writer who popularized the myth of Cthulhu, and Junji Ito, a manga artist who popularized the fear of spirals. Both writers are mentioned often as a source of inspiration for many games. For World of Horror, it resulted in the following game formula – indie, RPG, horror, pixel art and roguelike. I think this is where we can end the video. The game is just a scary pixel art RPG with nostalgic graphics. Right? We can't deny that the game has a pixel art style. We also can't deny that the 2-bit style graphics are a good match for the horror genre, and they don't bother me personally. 
But I'm a strong believer that if somebody like Kentucky Miura, a legendary artist and the author of Berserk, would make the graphics for the game, it would change the mood, but not the core of the game. Pretty games pop up very often, but in the end, art is just a package to attract players. The old rule still lives. If you play a game, gameplay is king. The indie aspect is not even that important for our dialogue. In recent years, it mostly represents just the scale of the game. Wild experimental nature of indies mostly favored it, in favor of simple projects with an obvious marketing appeal. This by itself is a dialogue worthy of an entire video. The gameplay for World of Horror is the place where I was looking for answers. But first, we need to be on the same level. This is what a typical playthrough looks like. We start the game by choosing a character, difficulty and modifiers if you have them unlocked. For each run, we start with a random old god that gives a global effect for the entire playthrough and random 5 events to find the key for the final dungeon. God's effects may include something like both you and all enemies deal extra combat damage or resting increases doom penalty. What is doom? Doom is a first person shooter, released and published by… Ok, ok, doom is a meter, a score that grows over time and by failing certain random events. When it reaches 100%, you instantly lose. Other important bars are stamina, aka physical or red health, and reason, aka mental or blue health. Also, funds are the source they can use for trade. When either stamina or reason reach zero, you lose. When funds reach zero, you summon a very nasty enemy that in certain circumstances can one-shot you. As for the combat, you have an indicator that shows how much damage the enemy will do and which exact resource will take the hit. You fight back by filling a bar with attacks, the same way you would do in a tactic game. This is basically your mana, but instead of just spells, all your actions use it. To summarize, get a random curse and 5 random stories, resolve all the cases, manage your resources and expel the evil god from the last location. If this does not sound video gamey to you, I don't know what would. Now that we know how the game works and that being an indie game or having pixel art is not the issue, we have 3 suspects left for this investigation. 3 main reasons why people enjoy this game so much. Horror elements, roguelite mechanics and an RPG core. We will start with the scary part. Pavel gave many examples of media that inspired his game. After I finished Uzumaki, one of the most praised works of Junji, I got the impression that he likes to draw disturbing stuff, but it's not very experienced with intricate stories. Where his craft truly shines are small snippets like the Enigma of Amigara Fold. The story is short and the ending got a good spook out of me. Just one frame from the entire manga, but it gave me a small chill, it sparked emotions. What I find scarier are images that mess up your perception and sense of security. If something feels too alien to be understood, it gives me a sense of unease that I cannot shake off. I have also read a Dungeon Mesh, an adventure story with D&D characters and a cooking king. And guess what? It felt scarier. You are much more invested in the characters and their fate because you had the time to know them and because you like their chemistry. Being scared is very subjective and each horror author has their own understanding and philosophy. For Junji Ito, it was a sense of grotesque, a curiosity for deformation that is stronger than the fear, and also a sense of grief that started his career. His first work, Tommy was inspired by a real-life event where his classmate suddenly died in a car accident. This feeling left an impression on him, and later he created this character who dies repeatedly, but returns every time as if nothing happens. When asked directly, he replied that his main fears are death, which is normal, and war, which is not a topic that is often approached by the author. Or let's take Ichiro Toyama, one of Silent Hill's authors. 
For him, darkness and day-to-day -day life elements are what makes a game spooky. Atmosphere over spectacle. With all that, I can attest that World of Horror is not a scary game. Thankfully, it lacks jump scares, but at the same time, the atmosphere is not frightening. You don't feel lost or abandoned, just mostly confused about how the hell the interface works. If we compare apples to apples, Monstrum, Amnesia or Outlast are better game examples. And guess what? You are a smart cat. You think this is because these are first-person games and they constantly jump scare you. But in the opposite corner, we have something like Lone Survivor, a 2D pixel art horror adventure. This game gives me a similar feeling to World of Horror, a feeling that I don't understand the hype or the nostalgia. However, the game was quite enjoyable at the beginning. I liked the mystery around the character and the clear sense of progression. Remember this tangent, it will be useful later. As for my breaking point on Lone Survivor, it happened around the basement when I got soft lock when I lacked an essential resource to continue. A resource that can be farmed, but you would never guess how to do it if not for the internet. The immersion was broken, but at least it was there in the first place so I could understand the drill. Both Monstrum and Lone Survivor are horror games in action, not just in flavor. Jasper Byrne, the author of Lone Survivor, saw this type of games as an evolution of adventure games. Old boring quests were replaced with something more realistic and personal. He studied psychology to just give a better representation of mental illness that the main character is facing. And not just for realism, but to pay respect to people who are facing this in real life. As a side note, he also composed a few songs for Hotline Miami soundtrack. And if you played Hotline Miami, you know that the OST is at least 50% of the vibe and 100% of... Jasper is working on a sequel to Lone Survivor, and if you are interested in Silent Hillish games, I will leave a link to his devlog. Do you know what I will not leave in the video description? The transition for the next segment. あなたの魔力が全てを物語っている。せいぜい合わせて100年。術を磨いて。どちらにせ。もう気がついているはずだ。私は魔力を制限して。そんなはずはないわ。お前の前にいるのは。Not being scary is not a scene for World of Horror. We can juggle moods as much as we want, as long as the game keeps its integrity and the gameplay is not left behind. From Steam reviews and my own experience, I can attest that World of Horror fits well in the roguelite category. Many claim this is a game genre, but I gravitated more to the idea that this is rather a game mechanic. Don't believe me? Hades is an action game, Slay the Spire is a deck building butler. The Binding of Isaac is an adventure game, similar to the old Legend of Zelda. Deathloop is a stealth shooter. Pacific Drive is a survival. Darkens Dungeon is a strategy game. Many games could survive without randomly generated content, if the authors had the time to place everything by hand. A game is often good despite roguelike mechanics and not because of them. But what's the deal with World of Horror? They say the game is an RPG, but it lacks a core component mainly a deep character building and a world to explore. In this case, what real genre does the game belong to? By my accent, you might think that I sell vodka to local zombies, but in reality I spend a lot of time making games or graphics. In 2023, I participated in a game jam held by Mark Brown, the creator of JMTK YouTube channel. I found a team through his Tinder-like page on HIO and we decided to make a game. For this gem we had the concept of changing perspectives from protagonist to antagonist and vice versa after every location. The choices of one character would affect the options for another. From almost 7000 entries, we got 76th place in the presentation category. For context, the winner of this contest got the first place. Could you guess which place we got for the enjoyment? 1331st place. 17 times the difference in score. Most beloved games in this genre look and sound good, but a huge minority of them play good. Pavel classifies his own game as an RPG and not without merit, but I strongly believe that World of Horror is a... Nurture Club. Hmm, 
Probably like, Literature is stupid. I'm joining the anime club. What the heck? <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking of a friend of mine. Okay, what if I said that we like, do group readings and discuss it together? I would probably nap through that. That's you, Sayori. Yeah, but that doesn't really sound fun to most people anyway. We need to really catch their interest, you know? Ugh, this sucks. Why is this so hard? Monica, don't be sad. What do you like about literature? Visual novel. I've checked the Steam tags and the closest to the visual novel tag was the point and click games. In which case you could consider Cookie Clicker a visual novel as well. I see people comparing it to Darkest Dungeon rather than Doki Doki. If we compare the roots of both genres, I mean the visual novel and the RPG, one is a text-based, character-focused, with a branching story, while the other is a character builder with complex combat system and world exploration. An average playthrough for World of Horror is one hour. Each playthrough has around five short stories, 10 minutes each, plus the ending. An average RPG might have around 50 hours of gameplay. Enough to build your characters, even if you care only about the looks or the stats. And my question is, what kind of great story you can tell in 10 minutes, or what kind of character you can build in one hour? When I made this simple comparison, I got exactly what was missing for me. World of Horror is a visual novel without a great story. Or also you could say that World of Horror is a story game without great characters. こんなところに偶然こう集電話があるなんて。ガチャリ。もしもし。私のトッピオ。どこにいるんですか、ボス。俺の近くにいるのですか。いるならすぐに来てください。それはダメだ。お前が奴に十分近づくまで私が行くわ
And you know what is crazy? I came to this conclusion before I read the interviews. And guess what? I found exactly the same idea from the author. He admitted that he likes his shorter story and that he is better at the long format. And also, most of his favorite stories resonated with me as well. You just can't fake meaningful work. And this is very ironic, that I praise one author from something that I critique another. But there is a key difference. Uzumaki is a long story with boring characters, while Enigma and others are intriguing stories with functional characters. Characters with complete arcs. That's why this approach works in the manga where you have proper tension and closure, and doesn't work in the game where your character is mostly neutral. You don't feel any accomplishments after you finish the game, and that's the tragedy of World of Horror. Not the bugs, balance or updates, but the lack of fulfillment. I don't know, man. Every freaking video I give the impression that I hate this industry. Doesn't matter, manga, anime, games, whatever. But in reality, I'm just too passionate about them. I want to discuss them, I want to study them. And sometimes my way of critiquing the works are just too edgy and literal. And to be frank, after I finished the research, I found out that the people behind the work are usually more interesting than the work itself. So I think I will keep this vector for the future as well. Also, if you have a great take what to add to the discussion, maybe where I'm wrong, maybe something interesting about the topic itself, maybe your old experience, I would gladly read it in the comments down below. While making this video, I had to rediscover myself many times. Only God and my OCD knows how much time I've spent on smaller details. The whole industry is also not staying still. I've discussed in my last video how I believe some genres have evolved and what happened over the last 15 years with horror roguelites. The video itself may be even more critical, but the style itself is very close in substance to what I did today. And because I show my art style and humor in everything I do, I will also leave a link to my other works. Cats, cute art, edgy humor, games and assets. Everything we might ever need to level up your life. Thanks for being with me. Have a nice day, you handsome Nieko, and don't forget to stay positive. See ya in the next one.